Good morning. Welcome to Cornerstone Christian Church. In this um, nearly winter time. Uh, personally, I'm uh, trying to convince myself that it's not winter, but I think the inevitability is uh, creeping up on me. I hope you're all well. I um, hope you've had a, had a reasonable week in this, uh, this uh, challenging COVID-19 environment. Let me, um, well, just a few announcements, which are probably exactly the same as last week. Uh, online men's coffee at uh, 10 a.m. on Tuesday, and uh, prayer at uh, 20 past eight next Sunday morning, uh, again online, and um, then church next Sunday. Let me uh, read from 1 Chronicles. This is chapter 16, verse 23 to 29. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Let's sing, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. Catechism again. Um, we're on question 10. Can you believe this is the 10th question? And uh, we're still dealing with the uh, Ten Commandments. Um, question 10 says, What does God require in the fourth and fifth commandments? Fourth, that on the Sabbath day we spend time in public and private worship of God. 
rest from routine employment, serve the Lord and others, and so anticipate the eternal Sabbath. Fifth, we love and honor our father and mother, submitting to their godly discipline and direction. And that comes from Leviticus uh, 19 verse 3. That's the, the Bible verse. It says, Every one of you shall revere his mother and father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Let's pray together. Life-giving Father, we will flourish only when we walk in your ways. You have made us, and you tell us we need rest. Keep us from justifying ourselves through ceaseless work. Give us humility to honor our parents. May we always live by your commands rather than by our own instincts. We pray this all in your wonderful name. Amen. We should sing again. What a friend we have in Jesus. should do now. We'll have a time of prayer and uh, I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll lead us but um, I'm sure you have individually have many things you would like to bring to, to God in prayer and uh, feel free to do that in your own space and your own words. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to be able to call you Father. And we are your children. We thank you, Lord, that you are the creator of the universe. You are the creator of everything. There is nothing that you don't know about. 
nothing that is beyond your control, nothing that is not in the palm of your hands. And, and yet, Father, you know each you know each one of us, and you love each one of us. And you want nothing more than we would just draw close to you. So, Father, help us to do that. Father, we pray also that your name would be glorified. And Father, we pray that um, that would happen in this service this morning, that your name would be glorified through everything that's said, that's sung, that's prayed, and through the message that Pastor Bruce brings us this morning. And Father, we want your name to be glorified throughout the world. And Father, at this difficult time throughout the world where many people are struggling and suffering and many people are looking for answers, Father, we pray that many would be guided and directed towards somebody who can, can give them the answers, can, give them, can tell them about the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and of you, Father. And we pray that your will would be done here on earth also. Father, so often we get distracted with our own thoughts and our own plans. And um, Father, we, we wander off into different directions. But Father, help us to continue to be focused on you, to, um, to allow your Holy Spirit to guide us in everything we do. Help us to read and study your word and, and to be mindful of you in, in everything we turn our minds to and our hands to. Father, let us not be distracted by all those bright and bubbly things in the world around us. Um, I thank you for the leaders of our country. Um, I thank you for, um, for Scott Morrison and the people around him. And I pray that you would continue to give him wisdom um, as he deals with the problems facing our country. And Father, as we gradually work our way out of this coronavirus um, problem, Father, I, I pray that he would allow your Holy Spirit to guide him in, in the way that uh, he manages this. And Father, I, I think even Pastor Bruce was speaking to me a while ago about um, the, the new local councillor for Alexandra Hills. Um, I think her name was um, Joanne McKenzie, or Ms. McKenzie. And, Father, we pray that, uh, well, it, it turns out that she's, uh, she's a believer, she's a follower of, of Jesus Christ, and Father, we pray that you would bless her as she works in the community and uh, help her to um, always be mindful of you when she's making decisions regarding this, uh, our community and other things in the Redlands. Uh, Father, I pray for... All our church family, uh, I pray for for good health. Father, uh, I know that that's that many of uh, our family are struggling with various health issues, and Father, probably more than anything, we pray for peace and calm, and that for each one, that you would uh, strengthen their faith and um, and prove. And, and, and for them to be very conscious of your presence and your love surrounding them. And Father, I pray for our brothers and sisters in Bangladesh, and uh, particularly, Father, I thank you that the outcome from this uh, this cyclone, cyclone I found, is it doesn't seem to be as bad as, as what many people were predicting it could be. And Father, I, I thank you for your hand in that. And Father. I know there's been, will have been huge damage and loss of property and Father, I, I pray that you would give the government wisdom as they, um, as they help people uh, work their way through that, through that problem. And for our friends, uh, our symbiosis staff members, Father, I pray also that you would, um, you would strengthen them in their faith. I thank you for the miracle of, <coughs> excuse me, the miracle of technology, which allows people from Australia to um, <coughs> to to study the Bible with them online and to pray with them and uh, worship you with them. And Father, I pray that each one would 
<coughs> we grow closer to you in their faith and stronger in their faith. Father, we thank you that you're a great God. You are the creator God. And Father, <coughs> I pray, I thank you that, that you love each one of us. And Father, all we can do in response is simply say, we love you and we want to worship you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's sing one more song before Pastor Bruce comes to, uh, to bring the message to us. This is uh, Servants of the Gospel. song that is um, just those words wow um, the, the, the chorus is is just an amazing a testimony um, I love I love where it says let me see if I can find you um, it says by uh, you know our, our prayer and our witness by grace we might win some um, your prayer and your witness is incredibly important to uh, the people's knowledge of who Christ is. And it's by our witness that they can see who we are. By our love as, as believers, not only to believers, but to the people that are lost, that are out there in the world. They can also see who we belong to. And, and it's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. I, I love that song. Um, I actually asked Dave if we could sing it this week because... I just, yeah, there's, there's just so much in that song that lifts up the Lord. Um, can we pray together? This, uh, what we're going to be going through now is, uh, it's just going to be a couple of verses, but the, the, the portion that we're starting on, um, John 17, is the high priestly prayer of Christ. And I don't want to do it a disservice, so can we pray together? Father, as we approach this wonderful chapter 
the chapter that is so full of your grace and your mercy and your, your ransom to us in the form of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I pray that through the reading, through the talking, through the understanding of this passage, we, we would come to know you more intimately, that there would be a greater relationship between us, but ultimately that we would serve you. We would be obedient to your call. We would be true servants of the gospel. Lord, would you help us now as we, as we go through this time? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, um, I've been having a look at this, this passage and I, I feel incredibly unworthy to preach from Scripture, um, as I'm sure most pastors feel. But in particular, this passage, uh, this, this chapter is, is, is so huge. Um, that it, it worries me um, sometimes. So when, when you come to this chapter of, of John, um, it, it, is, it is an enormous task to, to preach through it. I know it, it, it would normally take me maybe about two months to preach through this chapter. It's 26 verses. But what's contained in this chapter has so many implications, not only for, for Christ and then um, his disciples, but then also us. If you have a look at the breakdown of this chapter, uh, verses 1 to 5 are about his, he, himself. He's praying for himself. He's praying that, that he would be um, strengthened through, through God in this time that he faces. Then he, he looks at, at, at his disciples is the next uh, chapters, uh, uh, verses 6 to 19. He prays for his disciples for for them as they are going to be facing an enormous task um, that, would, that would ultimately end in their uh, uh, murder, in their ending of their lives. And then finally, verses 20 to 26, he prays for us. He prays for believers yet, yet future to, to the believers of, the, of, of, of those days. And, and there's, a, there's a great understanding of, of who God is in all of this. So as we, as we look at this, I want to read the first five verses um, so you just get an inkling. Um, I remember one time, the first time I preached, I think it was the first time I preached at Cleveland Baptist Church. Jason gave me this, this chapter to preach from in one, in one sermon and I made such a mess of it. I really did. I, I just wanted to jam everything in and I was confusing myself and confusing so many other people too and I don't want to do that today. So let's, let's read the passage. Uh, get your Bibles, open them up to John chapter 17. John chapter 17, and it's the first five verses. John chapter 17, 1 to 5. It's called the High Priestly Prayer. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you since you have uh, given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent I glorified you on earth having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Can you see the complexities here? Can you see just um, why I'm, I'm actually petrified to even preach from, from this, this passage? But it, it, it has to be done because there, there, there's so much here that pertains to us today. Um, even in these first five verses of, 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 of Christ's purpose here on earth, um, it is just so beautiful. But before we do that, I want to I go back to the, the last couple of verses in um, chapter 16. So if you... Uh, Bible's open at the same place. Have a look at uh, verse 31. Jesus um, is speaking and Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome 
the world. He has this, this dramatic declaration of, of Christ saying, I have overcome the world. The world and its evil system, the world, according to Satan, has been overcome by Christ and will eventually um, be overcome to its, 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 its total uh, fullness in Christ when he uh, dies on the cross but then ra gets raised from the dead. So um, he would absolutely destroy Satan. Satan thought, well, this is Christ's demise. He will die um, and he will go to uh, Hades, but then um, he rose from the dead. And obviously that's our glorious um, hope that we have that because he rose from the dead, we will rise as well. So let's go into um, chapter 17 and look at verse 1. It says, um, when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, well, what words did he speak? Well, we can go back to when Jesus goes off, uh, Judas goes off to betray Jesus. Judas goes off and he goes to the temple. He gets his 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus. And just the 11 are left with Jesus. And they're in the upper room and they 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 pack their stuff and they, 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 they're on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus now imparts from um, uh, chapter 15 through to uh, the end of chapter 17. He imparts these things to his disciples and prays for them. All that um, we have dealt with in these last few weeks, that's what uh, is spoken about by Jesus. But more than that, all that Jesus had said in the three years of ministry that he gave to his disciples and the people around um, that, that had attached themselves to Jesus and the disciples. He had, he had really imparted so much, but in particular, the last three chapters before his arrest. But now he is done talking, and now he lifts his eyes to heaven. Notice the words he chooses to use. He says, Father. Father, who is he praying to? He's praying to his heavenly Father. The Father that has given him everything to do. The Father that he's been obedient to, he's praying to the Father. Jesus' work on earth is almost done. All that's left is the humiliation, the suffering that awaits him. So where does this father-son relationship come from? Some would say that, that it was at his birth, 33 years earlier. But that is not the case. Jesus has always been the Son, the Son of God. Let's, let's, let's take a, a, a bit of a, a look back in the Gospel of John. So please turn back to uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Um, these words are so beautiful in that it, it explains who Jesus is, where he comes from, and his, where, where his origins are. So let's, let's have a look at that. It says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was nothing, was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Can you, can you see Jesus being there in the beginning? When we say there's a beginning, that means there is time. So, so in the beginning, He was already there. He was creating so when it was just God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that's where Jesus was. The Son was always there. He only came into existence the, the, the fl in, in flesh 33 years prior to this. That was the only thing. So in the beginning, God. In the beginning was, was Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Understand that, that Jesus, uh, the Son, predates Jesus, the incarnate man. The man in the flesh was 33 years old, but the man inside the flesh, the 100% the, the God of Jesus, cannot be predated. He is at the very beginning. Look at um, the, 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 the book of 1 John as well. If you can, if you can go there, it is, it is quite insightful as we look at these words. Um, because I, I want you to get a, a true picture of who Jesus is. I, I don't want you just to see him as the man veiled in flesh. The, the Godhead veiled in flesh, as Wesley would talk about. Look at uh, 1 John from verse 1. Let's go to verse 4. It says, That which was from the beginning... What beginning? 
Well, well, the beginning of the world, not the beginning of, of, of Christ, not the beginning of God, but the beginning of the world was in the beginning when he created everything. And then he talks about himself. Yeah, John is talking about his experience, which we have heard. They heard Jesus talk, um, which we have seen. They saw Jesus do miracles all over the place. Seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Who are they talking about? They're talking about Jesus Christ incarnate in the flesh. But going right back to the beginning where God was God and there was nothing else. The life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard and we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Their joy cannot be complete unless Christ is in it. Their joy cannot be complete unless the Father has sent the Son to save each one of us. Can you see how, how Christ predates even creation? That is there way before. Now, the last place I want to take you to is the book of Hebrews. The book of, book of Hebrews. And, and it's, uh, it is such a lovely passage. And I've read it so many times. But it is so joyous because it, it, it really explains who Christ is. Um, the, uh, the chapter is chapter 1. And the heading there is the supremacy of God's Son. The supremacy of God's Son. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 says, Long ago and many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his son. And that's a capital S. It's not a little s. That's his very essence. Whom he appointed the heir to all things. Through whom he also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, which he's about to do, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Can you, can you see the glory of Jesus? There, there in those, those four verses, we get a picture of, of who Jesus is, that he was given a task to do by the Father. The Father gave him a, a task. He was to come to earth to redeem those who were under sin and then go back to the Father to sit at the right hand interceding for you and I. That is incredible. Both, all, all three of these passages speak of, of, of Jesus not just being somebody in the flesh, but Jesus being there from the beginning. Just incredible words of who God is and how He spoke and how He acted through the Son. For us here today, we need to have a, a real understanding of who is praying here. Understand that it's Christ the Lord that is praying. It's Christ on his road to incredible suffering, incredible pain, incredible humiliation. He's on that road and he's praying to his father. Now understand this, uh, when, when, when he was on this road, he knew what was ahead of him. He knew that he needed uh, extra power, that he needed extra strength to be able to get through this and extra peace within his heart. He knew that, that there was no other way to redeem mankind but only through this method. Christ precedes life itself as we know it. He is life and precedes time and space. Jesus the Son is part of the Godhead Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So here we have the Son addressing the Father just before the hour had come for Him to suffer. The hour. We hear that all the time. The hour. Notice the Gospel of John. It says that His hour had not yet come. In the past. It said it seven times that His hour had not yet come in the, in the Gospel of John. Um, in John 2 verse 4, it says at the wedding of Cana, remember when, when his mother brought him the, 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 the um, said, 
there's, there's, there's wine that needs to be made. Um, you can do it. Um, and he says, she says to the servants, whatever he says to you, please uh, do it. And he said, um, why do you bother me? woman my time hasn't come yet so his time hadn't come for him to be into this place of 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 of, of redeeming uh, humanity at uh, john 7 verse 6 his time had not yet come uh, uh, 7 verse 8 7 verse 30 they tried to arrest jesus but his time had not yet come but now his hour was upon him as you look at, at John uh, 17, you realize that, that, that this is serious. This isn't, um, before there, there, there was a lot of talk amongst the, the disciples of who is going to sit at the right hand of Jesus. And, and, and there was like petty fights and, and all kinds of, and Jesus knew all of this. But, but all of that was now squashed away. It, it was gone. It, 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 it was meaningless. Now it was Jesus speaking to his father on behalf of himself, on behalf of his disciples, and on behalf of us future believers. This is the real Lord's Prayer. I know we, we, we talk about the Lord's Prayer and, and we, we recite it from Matthew 6 verse 9 to 13. And, and that's actually the disciples' prayer. And Jesus taught them to pray, our Father who art in heaven, uh, you know the prayer. Um, but Jesus couldn't pray this prayer. Jesus couldn't pray this prayer because he had no sin. He couldn't say, um, he couldn't pray, uh, forgive us our debts as we forget, forgive our debtors. Christ had no sin with him in him. So he was teaching the disciples to pray. But here we find um, a, a prayer that Jesus uh, models for, um, for his, his disciples in, in Matthew 6 verses 9 to 13. Um, he models them how to pray. But Right here in John 17, this is Jesus speaking to God the Father on His behalf and on our behalf. Understand that He's totally human. That, that, that His humanity is, is so evident in that He got weak, He got hungry, He got tired. He slept, He ate, He, he, was, he was in and out of boats. He got beaten. But He was totally God as well, 100%. Deity. Can you see how different these prayers are? The, 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 the one in, in Matthew, the disciples' prayer and the Lord's prayer that we are dealing with now. So when Jesus talks about his hour has come, what does that mean? It is time for the divine plan of redemption to take place. This plan is, God's, is, is by God's appointment. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all in unison, agreeing that the Son would suffer for the redemption of humanity at the cost of Jesus' life. Take that in for a moment. Understand the, 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 the huge suffering that Jesus would have to bear on our behalf. That the time was now there. Nothing else needed to happen. Jesus has done everything that, that God the Father had given him. And he even says that, I have accomplished everything except the cross. One man for many. Mark 10.45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. His life, his very life, his, his flesh and blood as a ransom for many. He was to ransom us from our sin. He was to buy us back to the Father. He was to reconcile us back to the Father. The ransom time was now at hand. Jesus continues. He says, glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Jesus came from heaven to earth as a babe, grew up as, a, as an obedient son, did the will of the Father so that he could display the glory of the Father on this earth and to everybody. As we read through scripture, we, we, we understand when, when um, Thomas says, uh, Lord, show us the Father. And he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. They are the, the exact same glory, exact same radiance, the exact same essence. So Jesus says, Thomas. If you see me, you, you, you know what God looks like. He displayed God in the flesh to us. So that all may know that he came from the Father. Jesus never sinned, though tempted. He never did what he wanted, but only did the will of the Father. Now he needs strength. 
He needs comfort from the Father for what he needs to face and what needs to happen next. The request for glorification included sustaining Jesus in suffering, accepting his sacrifice, uh, resurrecting him and restoring him to the pristine glory that he had before. So this was a time where he knew that there was suffering, but, but after that suffering, he, he would not only ransom us, but he would return to his glory as well. That would be an amazing thing to know that, that in just a little while, I will be with my Father and I'll be in glory. What is the purpose of this request? That the Father would be glorified by the Son, that God's wisdom, power and love might be known through Jesus. Just, just stop there for a moment. God's wisdom, His power and His love might be known through Jesus. As we read scripture, and we, we've been looking at, at, at a couple of chapters in John, we come to understand the enormous wisdom that Jesus had while He was on earth. He knew things that nobody else knew. He was able to perceive people, um, what they were thinking uh, in their hearts, in their minds. And even before they would say something, he would be able to have the right answer to be able to tell them. That's incredible wisdom. He had the power. He had the power over nature. In, in, in the Gospel of Mark, we see his power over nature, over sin, over everything. And then obviously, and love might be known through Jesus. God's love. How do we know this? Because he sacrificed his own life. He gave his own life. Jesus died on the cross so that we can be reconciled back to the Father. That is love. There's, there's no greater love. Look at verse 2. It says, Christ has authority over everything, humanity, nature, sickness, and even death, as evidenced in the gospel. He walked on water, multiplied food, healed the lame, the blind, the diseased, raised Lazarus from the dead. Why? To give eternal life. To all whom you have given him. The, 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 the greatest play, the thing that was at play here. Uh, yes, it was in obedience to God. Yes, it was to satisfy the, the demands of God. But that we would be ransomed. That you and I would have a pathway to heaven. That you and I would be able to uh, see uh, Jesus face to face. Um, I remember uh, during the week... Um, when we did the thing for Seaton Place and we sang one of Fanny Crosby's songs. And um, when we were singing it, the first thing that came to mind is, um, she was blind, obviously, was the first thing that she would see would be Jesus' face. Can you imagine that? That, that, that she wouldn't see colors and she wouldn't see beauty. She would, the first beautiful thing she would ever see was Jesus' face. And, 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 and I, I can just imagine it, that, that once we have eternal life, we are now going to be in the very presence of God himself, of Jesus. It makes me think of Ravi Zacharias as well. Having gone to be home with his Lord and Savior this week. Uh, what a life lived. What an incredible man who loved the Lord. Who was uh, not only on his, uh, close to his deathbed when he was 17, when he, he tried to commit suicide, but then having had a look at a Gideon's Bible and somebody witnessed to him, God saved him dramatically and we know that there are so many people in heaven because of Ravi Zacharias. And we are so thankful for a servant of God of that caliber. And, and, and we can follow Ravi's uh, example. Let's serve God with, with all we have. And wh why do we serve? Because he's given us eternal life. He's given us eternal life. And more so, he actually, we were given to Christ. As a gift from God the Father. That's you and me. Given to Him. John 18 verse 9 says, Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. We know that, that when Judas went, he was the son of perdition and, and he was lost from the beginning. And, and, and those 11 that, that, that God the Father gave, God the Son, He did not lose one. God the Fa Father draws us to Christ. He saves us and keeps us. A down payment is given to us, and that's the Holy Spirit, to attest that we are His. Do you have the Holy Spirit living within you? Do you have God's love, and God's care, and God's, God's nature within you? And then you do have the Holy Spirit. And that's a down payment of where you're going to be one 
one day. He will not lose us or let us go. If you are truly saved, Christ will hold you fast. We sing that wonderful, wonderful uh, song. And, and, and I just want to read a couple of the lyrics to you um, just so that you can hear some of the words that we sing all the time and, and maybe we don't, we don't um, kind of take it in. But, but listen to these words. It says, when, my fear, when I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, he will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path. For my love is often cold, he will hold me fast. Those he saves are his delight. Christ will hold me fast. Precious in his holy sight, he will hold me fast. He will not, he will not let my soul be lost. His promises shall last. Bought by him at such a cost. He will hold me fast. For my life he bled and died. Christ will hold me fast. Justice has been satisfied. He will hold me fast. Raised with him to end this life. He will hold me fast. Till our faith is turned to sight. When he comes at last. And the refrain there is. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. Keep those, keep those words in front of you. Know that, that Christ is able to hold you fast, able to hold you out of Satan's clutches, even though Satan tempts you, even though you fail. He will hold you fast because you belong to him. You do not belong to Satan. Christ came to give us eternal life. Christ came to give us eternal life. Look at verse 3. So, 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 so what is eternal life? Have you, have you thought of defining it? Define what eternal life? Yes, it's living forever. Eternal, eternal life, living forever. Yes, but, but it's more than that. Is it living in heaven where there's no corruption? Yes, that's beautiful, but it's more than that. Is it, is it uh, being saved by Christ here on earth and then living according to his, 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 his word until he comes and gets us? Yes, but it's more than that. Listen to this, verse 3. To know the only true God. And number two, to know Jesus Christ whom he sent. That is eternal life. You cannot have eternal life without knowing God and without knowing his son, Jesus Christ whom he sent. Outside of those boundaries, you have nothing. If you don't know without a shadow of a doubt that you belong to Jesus, there is a problem. And I want you, if, 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 if you want to talk to me about it, please speak to me. I would love to talk to you about that. To know in Scripture has to do with intimacy. In a marriage, if you, if you know your wife and you know your husband, it's, it's an intimate relationship. There's nothing you don't know about them. It's, it's, it's a consummation. It's, it's, it's got a lot of, um, in, in the Old Testament spe specifically, to know someone had, had, had sexual connotations. And it's, it's not about just the, the, the sexuality. It's about the intimacy. And that's the same understanding as knowing God. It is intimacy that is more intimate than you knowing your spouse. It's intimacy than you, uh, more than you know anybody else. If you think you are close to somebody, Christ Jesus has to be closer than anybody else. That intimate knowledge of Him is eternal life. If you know Him intimately, then you are joined with Him, co-heirs with Christ. That you're part of the family. You've been grafted into the, 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 the family of God. You are now a branch in the vine and you are bearing fruit and you will be pruned and it will hurt. But it's for your good. God is above all and needs to be known more than anyone else. Understand that, that he's above everybody and above everything. Verse 4, Jesus' obedience on earth is how he glorified the Father on earth. His work was now done on earth. And now in verse 5, he asked to be glorified as he was in the beginning before there was a world. Here in verse 5, we are confronted by who Jesus is and what he has done and what he's about to do. These are incredible, incredible verses. Look at, look at verse 4 and 5. It says here, Verse 4, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work. What work did he do? Well, he came, he was, he was born into a poor family. He went about and, and, and learnt 
and, and astonished people when he was at the, at, at the synagogue, when he was 12 years old. He astonished people. He carried on working. He, he chose his disciples. He went around proclaiming the gospel, the good news of, 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 of not only sight to the blind and, and, and healing to the lame, but, but a soul to be healed from sin. That was the good news of the gospel. And that work was given to Jesus. And he says, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence that the, uh, with the glory that I had uh, before the world existed. Jesus needed strengthening. He needed strengthening for this hour. The hour had come and he knew what was coming ahead. As you read these, these, these five verses, can you see who we're dealing with? Can you see who's praying? Can you see the, 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 the enormous um, stature of Jesus, but then the enormous task that laid ahead? And he needed that glory to be able to get through the suffering. Can I encourage you this week to, to read this, this prayer? Uh, read it as many times as you possibly can. Get the understanding of, of who he prays for. He prays for himself, he prays for the disciples, and then he prays for us here today. Read the, 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 the prayer as if it's your own. Have a look at it. Have a look at the nuances of, of how Jesus was praying for people and come to a greater understanding of what prayer is about. That prayer is more than just a list. Prayer is more than, 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 than just rattling off a few things. Prayer is intimacy. Prayer is an incredible intimacy of Father and Son, yeah, but now the redeemed with the Redeemer. So when you pray, know that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for you and for me. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Father, we so long for intimacy. I know I do, Lord, and many times I just, I'm just not intimate with you. Many times I want a head knowledge of you, and I want to prove how much scripture I know and, and how much I can recite. And Lord, all of that is just, it's just pride. It's just arrogance. Lord, I want to pray not only for myself, but for my beautiful um, people in our church. Lord, that we would know you intimately. That there would be a, 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 a knowing of you in the very core of who we are, so that we can love you as we ought. Oh Lord, as you were obedient to the Father, I pray that we, your servants, can be obedient to you. Go with us now, for your sake we pray. Amen. Thank you, brother. Let's, let's sing again. I need thee every hour.
4, verse 19 to 20. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The song and the reading go together quite well, don't they? We need him, we need Jesus every, to every, to every hour, all the time. And God's word said he will meet our needs. So let's... Um, Let's go out, spend the week depending on Jesus Christ and holding him close to us. I pray that you'll have a good week. Keep safe, keep well. I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.